What's up my friends? Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. Today we're going to review a new glider. It's the Voluntex ASW28 V2 glider. It has a huge wingspan on here of 100 inches. That equals 8.3 feet. Plenty of room for soaring and catching thermals, all that fun stuff. And each wing is actually gigantic. It's around 4 feet long for each of these wings on the ASW28. And since this is a plug and fly, it already came with the aileron servo installed and it has an optional flap setup if you'd like to put that on there. I don't have the flaps active for this demo, but uh, we're going to use those later on when I get another channel on my receiver. And I love this. It has CG on the bottom of the wing, so you put your fingertips here on both sides of the wing to balance it out. And it has a short spar, it's metal inside, and a longer spar. And it also has clips that lock into the unibody of the fuselage on each side. So really nice that the wings lock into place. But on the very top, I also use a piece of packing tape just to keep sh those wings secure inside the fuselage. Now we're also gonna use a D4R2 receiver. We'll have plenty of range with this receiver. And the fuselage is 44 inches. So it is a shorter fuselage for this long of a wing. And the fuselage is virtually indestructible. It's made out of some kind of like milk jug plastic or something like that. And it has an 850 kV brushless outrunner motor, 30 amp ESC. And my canopy is not super, super secure with the tabs. So I used a piece of wing tape. I'm also using a 3S2200 and I have it just over top of that 30 amp ESC. It already has an XC60 connector in here. And further back here in the wing, you can see those two steel rods go through the wing to give you a more rigid wing setup. I also added an extra piece of plywood here in case I wanted to do a parallel battery setup. I can get a much longer flight time if I decide to do that and kind of double my flight time. Also up front, they have a folding prop, which is great for cutting back the throttle and just coming to a complete stop while you're gliding, making it more efficient while you glide and soar. Also, they have winglets on the outside of each wing. This is nice because eagles have the same type of thing on their wings when they're soaring. They have this flipped up wingtip and it really does help for efficiency in flight. So this plane is already balanced. The CG is right. We're going to go ahead and add some FPV gear on here. Today we're going to use the Cadex Rattel. It is a beautiful camera. You'll see that when I show you the FPV view after the line of sight flight test. Riding just above that, we have the Triumph antenna running 5.8 from my VTX of choice running 200 milliwatt today. All right, let's go ahead and do the line of sight flight test and check out the wing bounce right there. There's a little bit of flex when I move the fuselage up and down. If you launch a glider, it should look something like this. It should not fly into the ground or go nose up. If it goes nose up, it's a little bit tail heavy. If it goes nose down, obviously too much weight in the front. You have to adjust your battery for the CG. So um, keep that in mind when you go to CG yours and get your balance correctly. Um, you can move your battery forward and backwards quite well. And mine looks perfect right here. So I'm going to go ahead now. I think I'm safe to just go ahead and try some FPV. I have Diego, who is Duber FPV, right behind me on this flight, so he's going to do some filming from his quad, and I have that first person view right there with the Cadex Rattel. Took a little bit of a hard turn on the launch because um, immediately on the throttle, the plane seemed to want to climb a lot, and I, I forgot to use rudder to correct that. Probably the best way to fly this plane when you first start out, use a lot of rudder instead of aileron to make your turns. It will turn much better if you use the rudder. It really does. Uh, I tried my first few flights to fly this plane with a, a lot less rudder, ailerons, and it just kind of wing over, uh, which is kind of a, leading you to like a wing over and wingtip stall. So you don't really want to do that with this much wing because when you have a wingtip stall with a sailplane, a lot of times they just fall straight at the ground uh, into a corkscrew and getting out of a corkscrew you have to use rudder to help you get out of that corkscrew so once i got it up i realized that i could cut the throttle way back and this baby would glide it does fly like a slope soaring sailplane it has all the characteristics that i want for soaring and there goes diego in front of me right there see that little bee look like and out in the distance i can see mount st helens the retail looks really good there's Diego's view again of him coming underneath me. And if it's a little bit breezy, the 3S2200 seem kind of light. I do have some 2650 batteries, and the 2650 uh, is it's just going to be a little bit bigger, but the 2200 is where you can start out, and you can move up to a 3000 milliamp to get a little longer flight time. If it's windy, I would do something like a 3S3000, and that's just going to get you up there. 
and uh, get you a little more stability and you won't be flopping around quite as much but I felt like it probably could handle a 4S battery but honestly with a glider you don't need a whole lot of power because actually this flies better with less throttle the minimum throttle that you're gonna fly this at is probably about 20 to 30 percent and then a lot of times if you really want to save battery and you can keep this thing up for a half an hour uh, flight times on a 3S 2200 were getting me around 15 minutes and that's if I was really kind of cranking on the throttle so you could actually probably get a, a longer flight time somewhere around 20 to 25 minutes if you do a lot of soaring if you just get up there cut the motor and glide but right here I've just got a really low minimum throttle of about 15 percent and I am just enjoying the scenery up here and look how stable this plane is once I get it leveled out it's really really smooth when you first put it up also make sure that you only have I would say about 10 millimeters or so of control surface movement uh, up and down you really don't need any more than like 10 millimeters up and down so you can limit your travel on the ailerons and honestly I felt like it didn't it almost didn't need the flaps I, I do have a pretty big field here that we're flying from uh, but if I was on the side of a mountain I might add the flaps to it if I had a really short spot to land if I had to come in and land in about 10 feet 10 to 15 feet I've landed in places like that on the side of mountains but it really does hold a straight line really really nice it feels great in the FPD view a lot of guys are adding flight controllers to this glider as well flying on GPS return to home you can put crossfire in this baby and make it fly miles and miles you can go up just about as high as you wanted and you can do all kinds of uh, sweet modifications to this plane so plug and play it's a pretty pretty foolproof plane and I think it was a lot of fun to fly super extra durable and I think it's a crazy price right now on Banggood I think their price is down below $150 so for a plane that has an 8 foot wingspan this is a really awesome buy and uh, I'm gonna give it a star rating of around 4.5 stars out of 5 for this plug and play kit because honestly all I had to do was just slap the wings on put my battery in and go fly this baby uh, and add a little bit of FPV and it's a lot of fun thanks for watching guys I'll see you in the next one